Hey, hello everyone, it's great to see you. So we're all here again. My name's Mike. Who else have we got here? We've got Fred. Hello. We've got Costas. Hello. And we've got Tim. Hi. So this is our third video on North African drumming. Tell you what, if you haven't yet seen videos number two, one and two, you need to go and watch those first before you see this one, because we're not going to recap everything we've done, and there's a lot of things in there you need to know before you can do the stuff in this one. So, um, we're having great fun playing these North African drums. We've also got some lovely images behind us, and Fred, we've already talked a lot about your camel, but Fred, where, where is your camel? Where are you? So I am in the Sahara Desert, and uh, I've actually, I actually spent the evening and the, and the night in the Sahara Desert once. We went from Morocco, um, and we went through, uh, sorry, from Marrakesh, and we went through the Atlas Mountains, um, and then did the last little bit on a camel. And I thought it was going to be the hottest night's sleep that I've ever had, but actually it was the coldest night's sleep <laughs> I've ever had. Um, which was very surprising considering it's the desert. Yeah, I've been on the desert as well, but in the Sahara Desert, of course, the Sahara Desert is huge and covers across several different North African countries. So you were saying that's in Morocco. When I went to Tunisia, uh, we also went on a camel again at sunlight. And I was surprised as well. The moment that sun goes down, it gets cold. Uh, we, were, we had to wrap up um, in all these amazing clothes and sit on top of camels. So it was good fun. Tim, where are you? Ah, well, I'm at a very famous place. Look at the shape of those things behind me there. And if you can say the, the name of that shape, you will be naming that particular structure because those are the pyramids at Giza in Egypt. Um, a very, very famous area, a World Heritage Site, I think. Mm. And um, very, very well known. Um, and there have been lots and lots of excavations there where archaeologists have gone and looked to see what's inside them and what's been going on in there and how they were built too which is an incredible thing because they were built thousands of years ago and they are gigantic i mean if you look just here can you see these aren't ants these are people and then look at the size of the pyramid compared to the people absolutely wow. huge amazing so they're an incredible structure amazing really amazing yeah thanks so the reason why we were talking about a lot of stuff particularly Egypt, is we're going to learn some Egyptian drums, Egyptian rhythms today, because a lot of these drums that we're playing, they're played in many different countries in North Africa, um, but there's a rhythm that's very much Egyptian, and it's called the Maksum. Maksum. And so we're going to first of all learn, uh, there's, there's some words to fit this rhythm to help us play it right, and very easily, it's the name of the rhythm, Maksum, and then where it comes from, Egyptian. So it goes, Maksum, Egyptian. Maxum Egyptian, Maxum Egyptian, Maxum Egyptian. Shall we say that together? What do you want? Two, three, and Maxum Egyptian, Maxum Egyptian, Maxum Egyptian, Maxum Egyptian. Easy. Now, when we're going to play this on the drum, now remember we talked about before when we did our hand movements, Fred was telling us, you know, we get nice bass sounds and we get some higher sounds. And tone sounds as well. So I've got one of these um, darabukas here I'm using today. Now, here is a bit of technique that you'd be using on a darabuka because you play it in a very different way from perhaps how you play a djembe or a bongo or a conga, things like that as well. Often what you do is you use your first finger and your ring finger as well. And in fact, I'm going to have this holding with this hand and this hand here is actually not going to do anything. It's just going to hold it to begin with. And I'm going to play with this first finger and it's going to have it quite straight and hit there. Now what happens if I try and hold it so you can see this drum, I can get a lot of the bass sound by having my finger just there. Now when the hand naturally falls, my ring finger, you see, is naturally going to hit the drum much further near the edge. So I'm going to get a much higher sound. I'm going to get the more tonal sound. So what's really clever is I'm actually not moving the position of my hand. I'm just alternating between my strong finger and my ring finger. So perhaps we could just to begin with, and whatever drum you've got, we could just go first ring, first ring, just do that. Just try and get used to between alternating between those two different fingers. And make sure we're getting different sounds on the two. Sounds like a clock ticking away, doesn't it? Now that takes but quite a bit of practice just to get used to that kind of movement between those two those two fingers. So there we go and play our rhythm. Maxum Egyptian, 
Maxum Egyptian, Maxum Egyptian, Maxum Egyptian, Maxum Egyptian. So we have to think about which of those ones I'm doing with my first finger, which one I'm doing with my ring finger. So I'm doing the Mac Maxum with my first finger, and then the middle syllable of Egyptian, the Jip bit. I'm doing also with my first finger, so it's Maxum Egyptian, Maxum Egyptian. Grab your together. One, two, one, two, off you go. Maxum Egyptian. That's one of those things that is quite tricky to do. See, my other hand wasn't really doing anything at all, but there are some little decorations we could add in. In fact, what I'd quite like to do is if we can go over to Costas. Um, Costas, um, you've got oh, a nice big, bigger drum there. It's like one of the bass drums and um, the Ben Deere type drums. And um, what could you do? So if you do the same kind of thing, but what could you do just to fill in, just to get so your other hand's doing something? What could you so do? So my left hand is going to play only two fast notes, one, two, one, two, very fast. And I'm gonna add these little notes into our uh, rhythm. So feels and improvisation as is a part of this type of drumming, any type of drumming actually. So as we have our rhythm, I'm adding those little notes. some more notes as well. The important thing is that we have to know our rhythm very well before we start to improvise. So start with little notes like We can say maxum Egyptian and a maxum Egyptian and a maxum Egyptian and a maxum Thank you so much, Costa. That's brilliant. Yeah, really great. So yeah, improvising, put these little fills in, that's how they do it. And sometimes I would see it be played not just with um, just doing two little notes there. They sometimes put in some extra notes here as well with their strong hand. Yeah, now, this is beginning to sound more like an Egyptian matsu when we have that. Makes you want to move a bit. Actually, when they're playing this, they always fit with some dancing. The style of dancing is belly dancing. Now, you get different styles of belly dancing in Egypt, and this maxum rhythm very much fits with the folk and the social side of belly dancing. And actually, when you think about it, in that Arab culture, a lot of that Arab culture, particularly the ladies, you know, they're not allowed to um, wear a few clothes they have to wear, you know, the big, long um, um, sort of clothes they're wearing, and often they do the dancing and with their fully dressed um, with those clothes on. And you see actually often the, the men and the women would be in separate places, so they, they wouldn't be mingling together. And the children might be with the, with the women as well. So, but they'd be doing all these kind of things socially. So it's maybe a different style of sort of belly dancing from what we've maybe heard about before. But I'll tell you what really fun is if we um, could put it all together, um, everyone all together, but I'm gonna make it a little bit faster. So if we can get our maximum Egyptian, and we're just going to speed up a little bit. Let's see how fast we can get this. Are you ready? One, two, three, four. Thank you. 
was that? Think you could do that okay? Should we try a bit faster? Anybody found that easy? Let's try a little bit faster. Here we are. One, two, one, two, three, and. <laughs> good at this really good shall we try it faster because I think you know when it's quite a lot faster this is when it really starts to feel like we're in a proper Egyptian belly dance thing and we've got these drummers going are you ready here we go one, oh, here we are, ready? one two three go takes a lot of practice go and practice that and make sure you can get those nice little fills working in as well for your rhythm so if you go and have a look at the quiz see if you can answer the stuff because remember there's the name of this new rhythm and also we were talking about different ways of making fills or where it came from what it's when it's played and things they're the kind of things the questions in the quiz are about and we will see you next time for our fourth video thanks so much everyone bye